Hi everyone, Rina Golan here. Today I want to talk about Kama, sexual well-being. It comes from the Vedas, from Purushata, which is the goal of life. It's the four foundations of well-being. I'll put all the four, I made a video about the whole Purushata. I'll put the link in the comments. But today I'm just going to touch the Kama, the sexual well-being, but it's actually not separated from emotional well-being. And physiologically, if you think about it, like we regulate hormones in our sex organs. If the right frequency and the satisfaction and in that area, then our we regulate hormones better and then hormones are emotions. The Rishis understood that there is importance to have a, a sexual, emotional well-being uh, for us to experience moksha, which is kind of what some will translate as enlightenment, or you could just think about it as uh, oneness. Okay, the experience that I'm not separated, the experience that I'm part of something great. The sexual well-being is important for that, the, the, to, to give us that. Um, it's kind of like creating a conducive environment for that oneness, for that enlightened state of being. I want to find the balance of how to translate a very ancient scriptures into a modern way of thinking. And it's, it's a tricky job, but I, I will do my best. So just know that it's only my humble interpretation. From what I understand right now from a lot of research is basically when there is a sexual interaction, the men leave in the woman's body their DNA for at least seven years, sometimes forever. And other research found that this DNA actually reaching the woman's brain. So who we sleep with will affect the way we behave. So it's about, from the way I see it is about honoring the animal side of ourselves that have needs and want that kind of union uh, and want to reproduce, but also want to have fun because there, there's some parts that are there for the fun of it, not only for reproduction. And the, the, this union is, is in a way a serious business because it will affect the way we are. So do you really want to sleep with somebody that will say parts of this person will stay in your body forever? It's a question we must ask because I don't see sexual freedom as real freedom. Um, it's like taking a child into a sweet shop and say, eat as much as you want. It's not healthy. First of all, to kind of explain that in, there, there is no mention in the Tantra, uh, in the scriptures, about sexuality. Have sex as a sacred practice. It's not. There is a particular practice. is talking about using meat alcohol and sex as a way to really see how you can find God within the most challenging kind of lust experiences, experiences when you kind of like out of control in a way. So this is like really serious practice for people that are super grounded in their spiritual practice. So it's not a common practice and it was taken in the 19th century but by some French guy and then they kind of changed it to what will suit the western mind and made it into a sexual spiritual practice but it's actually not there sex is a beautiful thing and i'm not at all saying anything bad about it i'm only saying investigate where you're coming to it because it is a sacred act it's two bodies becoming one and it's a beautiful thing when it's done with respect and love now even if you decide you want to be with this person for, for a short while, it might, you know that it's not going to last forever, but there is a, there is a willingness to see the other. You're coming with, a, you know, with that presence, which is actually true love. When you really see the person in front of you, you can really love them right now. It doesn't mean you want to be with them forever, but there is a love. There is, there is um, respect. And if I come to that union and I see the other person that they just need it because they're feeling frustrated or anxious or needing belonging or needing a being seen, then I really need to feel for a moment within myself, do I really want to get involved in that dynamic? Do I really want to bring the two bodies into one and get affected by each other's frequencies if that's the frequency? Or do I want to say, actually, this union will only increase their insecurities and that will also somehow play out in my bodies and decide if this is where I want to go. So it's just coming with inquiry. I mean, today is like just about coming... 
to everything with a bit of a question, with a bit of investigation, with a bit of curiosity, friendly curiosity, that's it, friendly curiosity, uh, to every situation, you know, because I teach, um, as you know, I run retreats, which is all about cleanses and our relationship with uh, cleansing body, mind, spirit, and our relationship with food and other things to um, create a conducive uh, state for our well-being mentally, spiritually, and um, physically, and ecologically. So, um, one of the things I recommend is, is to eat less, for example, if I have a story with food, or but not from a place of punishment, but just from a place of investigation of what is my relationship with food, why am I going there, what do I really need, what am I really hungry for, and, and then go and eat, but just check for a moment. So I would say the same thing, do with sex. You know, the, the, the Kama Sutra was written by a monk, by a brahmacharya. And I did five years of agreement of um, celibacy because I really wanted to investigate that experience and really try different things. And I can tell you that it, it's, a, it's a very profound practice. It's a beautiful experience, not forever, but f as, as an experiment. And definitely not, you don't have to do it for five years. You could just do it. But for me, the, the decision was that it, it has to be right for, for everybody. Yeah, there is, there is hunger and there is greed. And this is the balance. And this is why the Purushata is talking also about financial well-being, sexual and spiritual being. So we, we don't go with anything with greed, with too much. Because that's what's going on on the earth right now. We take more than we need. So if we take less sex than we need, if we take less food than we need, and what we do have, we savor and enjoy and honor and respect and be totally graceful for it, then, then we have a chance to, to really grow up as a society. I think that this is really what it's about. And then uniting physical bodies can be a, a really much more profound experience than what we're experiencing right now. If you want to look at things that how to improve sex, like so obviously books like The Multi-Orgasmic Man and The Multi-Orgasmic Woman by Mantak Chia, David Dada is really brilliant about those relationships, sexual relationships, and just, you know, and the Kama Sutra, of course. And I would just say last thing that the, the Kama Sutra that was written by Brahmacharya, which a lot of the time we translate the Brahmacharya as a, as a celibate person. But actually what it really means, literally means Brahmacharya. So Brahma is God and Charya is chariot. A lot of English words come from Sanskrit, actually. So if so, the, the idea was that we are sitting on the chariot on the way to Brahma. So we know the direction. We know where we're going. And marriage came later on. So you, did, you don't sit on your own on the chariot. So you're both sharing the same direction. You both know where you're going. You don't know the way, but you know where you're going. And so you choose somebody that will sit with you on the chariot to Brahma. So that's really a, the higher sacred union uh, that we can um, at least wish for ourselves, if we want or not. But even if it's three months, at least bring some sacredness there and see what will happen from that. Lots of love and thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, in December 31st till January 3rd, I'm running a women's retreat uh, four days uh, and I would love you to be there so all the details I put it in the comment below lots of love and please comment and say what you think and what is sacred union for you that would be amazing